as you check the Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got Jaime and Fuego, yeah! And we are here to do a viewer requested review. I gotta say, you guys, because we watched this movie and we weren't sure whether or not we wanted to do an individual review or whether to just do it on our review roundup for August, but we put up a poll on our community tab on this very channel. And if you guys checked that out, you would see that we asked, do you want an actual full review like we, we've been doing for the new movies or you know are you okay with just a review roundup and surprisingly we ended up getting uh, about 170 votes in the time since i put it up it was 53 percent individual review because i gotta know now and 47 percent review roundup because meh i can hear about it whenever and uh, we did get a few comments of people saying, you know, I just want to hear your guys' opinion on it. So I like Neil Blomkamp movies, so I'd like to know, you know, that kind of thing. So this review is for you guys. So thank you so much for requesting our opinions on this. And let's get into it, Fuego. So talking about the brand new Neil Blomkamp release, Demonic. Of course, Neil Blomkamp being the man behind District 9, then ended up going to Elysium, then went and did Chappie, uh, which <laughs> was not so great, and then ended up doing short films for something that he formed called Oat Studios. Yeah, and I was going to say Zygote was so rad, and there was a couple other really just awesome ones too, one that pertained to the Vietnam War, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and so those are really a, a showcase of his talents, man, and this, I know there were constraints, and so that's, I'm, I'm trying to maybe put an asterisk next to this as we discuss it but obviously we will get into it so look i mean <laughs> you can always write a movie within constraints yes this film was shot during the pandemic yep. so uh, there are obvious limitations but you write a story around it like and he he pretty much did this story didn't necessitate more people than we got in it but i don't think that that's the reason why it wasn't good I think that it was at its core the story wasn't interesting enough in my opinion so going into our overall thoughts I'll jump into mine and yeah this movie was one of my least favorite Neil Blomkamp ventures up until this point I still would oh god I don't even know I'd still probably rewatch this before Chappie but it would be tough I, I would I would beg and plead someone to let us watch one of his other features instead because uh, I actually quite liked both District 9 and Elysium and the Oat Studio stuff. So I had high hopes, but the trailer led me to worry a little bit with how they showed the rendered world of yes. this sort of VR thing. I mean, we're in 2021 and I guess, yes, it might be rough around the edges, but no, I mean, even renders nowadays for immediate presentation are better and if they're trying to be futuristic about it then i would think it would be a little bit better than what they did but maybe it was the point of trying to just show the difference between reality and that reality but it still didn't need to look necessarily how it did so the story was a little substandard the effects didn't do anything for me when i know what blomkamp is capable of effects wise truly like knowing that having that barometer like really puts this in a particular place for me so yeah overall I just did not enjoy this movie. Fuego, how about you? Yeah, I'm in the same camp, unfortunately, man. And I'm actually a Chappie apologist. I like Chappie. It's got a certain sweetness to it. The the D ant word, die ant word, they were why that film sucked so bad, in my opinion. But, I mean, Jackman and Sigourney Weaver, there, there is some... There is some serious talent in that film. This one most definitely showed that there was not a talented core of actors. And even with District 9, you know, the guy who was in Hardcore Henry and various other things, he's still a very esteemed and very established actor. I'm not sure what the people in Demonic have done previously. I thought the acting was lackluster, regrettably. The effects, I still wonder if they were deliberately junky looking yeah, when she, they had when to she have jumped been. into the other world. And that's what I thought. Yeah, as a whole, I will actually 
go out and say, I think this is sadly Blomkamp's weakest film that he has made to date. So Now, before we jump into the details, do you think it's because it was made during the pandemic? Or do you think there was a bigger problem when all's said and done? I think you raise a good point in the fact that you can't just make excuses because it was a small cast and they had more remote settings and, and stuff like that. And it was really Dude, host, a lot of host was a pandemic movie. Sorry, sure. I know people hate sure. when I interrupt. Remember <laughs> your thought, please. Exactly. But host was shot during the pandemic and it, it was. was way lower budget and it was way more entertaining. I would watch that way more times than I'd watch demonic. Yeah, I think it was really focused at, at the end of the day. And this really did maybe try to overstuff the turkey with a lot of interesting ideas as far as once you get into the religious aspect and then you also have the VR aspect and there's all these different things trying to, you know, coalesce and coincide and they didn't always work together, unfortunately. And you also have the whole familial aspect, you know, with the mother and daughter and the strained relationship there and they didn't develop it very well. And so, I don't know, it was a... It was a missed opportunity in a lot of ways in this film's regard. Although I must admit, uh, our, our friend, shout out to Sinister Cinema, Jason Smith. He didn't like the third act. I quite enjoyed the third act. That's where I felt like the movie was kind of figuring itself out. It was kind of between the cell and priest, if you guys have seen that without spoiling stuff. And I was intrigued by that, but they didn't develop it enough. So there you go. That's fair. And I mm -hmm. can understand what you're saying now. Just real quick, I want to address this because it, it, it's commented on almost every review. So when I interject Fuego like that, <laughs> people think I'm cutting you off and like I'm the rudest motherfucker. And it's like, let Fuego finish his thought. When I interject like that, it's to make a small point, like a two sentence point that is bolstering what Fuego is saying, you guys. Like, and I still cut you off sometimes too. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's literally backing him up. So I'm, I'm doing it to agree with his point and then I let him get right back onto his point and continue. So it's not like I'm cutting him off because I feel like what I have to say is more important. It's it's literally because I'm agreeing with him and I just have additive stuff to say. Like, as Fuego and I have said numerous times, but we don't address it enough, we kind of operate along the lines of the old Siskel and Ebert show. And they kind of interrupted each other all the time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because it's yeah. conversational. It's what friends talk like when they're doing reviews baby's day out is your kids little kids next best choice well, this is fascinating gene because you've just defended this film on exactly the same no, grounds I that i use for the shadow no, you like the art direction you like the look you like the old-fashioned other feel. things you like the tone well oh, no, 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 i no. hated this movie more than any other movie on this show and i'm uh -huh. i'm really surprised at you you should be ashamed of yourself what first of all they're not movie... agreeing with you i've never well, been ashamed of that i've been proud of that okay well in that case uh here's another star for your lapel so you know, you may not like when I do that, but there's it, it, there's a reason behind it, and it's not to just because my opinion matters more. It's it's because I'm trying to add on to what Fuego is saying without having to go all the way back to it because Fuego can make longer points. And so to circle back to something he said 30 seconds ago, that it doesn't make sense at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, and often I, you lose the train of thought and that specific sort of, you know, rebuttal or, you know, affirmation or, or whatever. And exactly. that's the thing, guys. It's like when you are sitting around shooting the shit with your friends and talking about a movie or a book or a video game or whatever the hell it may be, you typically do not allow said person to give all of their discourse. And I mean, if you're enthusiastic and enjoying the conversation, you are going to want to jump in and, you know, just, I don't know, give your preferred rebuttal or whatever so and that's also why i jump in because then fuego trails off with little shit like that <laughs> yeah, which I do. Yeah, yeah. but anyway getting back to the movie let's Guilty talk about struck. let's talk about the story fuego so yeah. do you want to jump in? go ahead you, you you describe the story for everyone yeah i can give the best assertion possible i mean so so we have this girl and uh, she has a mother who has a history of mental health issues and she is kind of on the outs with a couple friends one has relocated and is actually back in her neck of the woods and then there's another one named martin who she was very close with she even calls her best friend at, at certain times but he kind of fell prey to seemingly some of the same stuff that her mother as far as conspiracy theory stuff and the religiousness seeps in eventually and so her mom angela has been missing for a while she has apparently been taken into a particular place where they are analyzing her 
and they want to essentially recruit her and put her into a sort of VR setting so she can connect uh, her mind with her mother's and there is an essence of demonic possession and they think that there is a way to kind of take the person out of the simulation and it does get a little convoluted I, I, I must say and that was one of my gripes about the script it expands on it but it just doesn't really give me the sort of richness that I was hoping so that's really the long and short of it she is jumping into these sort of VR settings with this presumed government but maybe religious tied group of scientists as well and that's about as much as I can say, I think, without spoiling stuff, because it does pull the curtain back significantly in the second and the third act. And you start to realize more of the nature of why her mother is in this particular position, how she got there in the first place, you know, based on the location where it happened and taking people back to said location with hopes of having a better chance of taking things out of them. And I'm kind of jumping on eggshells, dancing around right now. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's basically a possession tale mixed with yep. the Lawnmower Man and Virtuosity. Yeah, true. So if you've seen any or all of those, then that's the vibe. But yeah, it's a very basic story. Very basic story for very. the amount of time that the movie takes. And it does get awfully convoluted within its basicness like all the reasoning and the medical jibber jabber the garbage terminology that they use along the way doesn't make sense and it really didn't add anything so i don't know why they they chose to go that way and going all jargony at times but when they finally focus on what's actually going on and stuff everything makes more sense and it's like oh it became clear again like you said in the third act when things become crystal clear, it's, I think, a little bit more enjoyable. Now, there is an aspect of the thing, right, that is interjecting itself, whether it be by possession or by straight escape in some way or another. I feel like that was, I wouldn't say it's strong, but it was one of the stronger portions of the film. I liked this being without trying to spoil anything about it. You know what I mean? Agreed. And I mean, we see it in the trailer. So they okay. they like pretty much line it up that there is going to be some sort of otherworldly creature, demonic sort of situation. This is not the night house where you're wondering and it's left ambiguous. It leaves it pretty cut and dry in that mm -hmm. regard and yeah in, in the third act when the storytelling shifted from science to religion that's where i felt like it kind of found its footing a little bit more so than in in the second act so so let's talk about the acting uh, i thought the acting was good i mean i didn't have any issues with it i thought that the the main girl was fine like i i don't know no one blew me away because it was such a familiar story to me. Like, no one really had the room f for specific standout moments, in my opinion, the way everyone was written. But they were all good. I liked the mom well enough, but she had a very sort of limited role as far as compared to everyone else. So, yeah, acting-wise, I think everyone did fine, but no one really stood out as outstanding or particularly enjoyable to watch the main character i should say she had a nice look to her like a nice alternative kind of look with the pink hair and whatnot but she wasn't the most interesting of characters to me i don't know what, what did you think of the acting on it for you <sighs> i'm gonna have to echo your sentiments man because of the fact that everything about this movie was fine it was fine you know it was serviceable it wasn't bad but it definitely didn't wow me it didn't performance-wise or story-wise bring anything new and revolutionary to the table and that does kind of correspond with the performances too you know i thought martin was you know good i thought her friend who uh has just relocated to the town i, I like some of their interactions but it wasn't really very well developed you know it's more so a lot of these dream sequences and dude if i had a nickel for every time we have a nightmare dream sequence in a horror movie that i've watched in 2021 i'd have a shitload of nickels man it would be <laughs> just I, I wouldn't amount to much unfortunately but yeah. it, it's just so much of a tropey thing at this particular point i almost expect it and this film had it in spades, but the mom and the daughter, they're kind of the, the lifeline of this thing. And yet I wish we could have had more between the two of them, aside from those couple scenes. Because I agree. 
those were the most that resonated with me. Everything else, you know, all of the other uh, ulterior interactions, uh, especially with the military slash what we find out that they are guys. Um, it, it was just so wooden and didn't really have that vibrance I wanted. See, so, I feel like, yeah. tell me the movie wouldn't have been better served if it had played out like The Silence of the Lambs. Where like she was meeting up with her mom the same way Clarice was meeting up with Hannibal. Oh, okay. And we didn't know that there was, you know, something else involved trying to cross over through the bars, so to speak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that would have been a, a, a tad more interesting than what we got here. But yeah, acting wise, it was at least passable. Now, let's touch on production design because... I think this is where the limited, well, I don't know, you tell me. Do you feel like the limited production aspects are what maybe made this feel like a smaller, perhaps lower budget film than a lot of other movies out there? Or do you think it was deliberately made to look this small and this kind of low budge? I think it was supposed to be kind of a personal tale, and so maybe it, it wasn't completely budgetary constraints that made them approach it like this, because even those Oates shorts, man, they felt big in scale, Yeah, you know, and uh, same with Chappie and uh, Elysium and, and District 9, all of those felt like big movies. This is more of a, a personal contained sort of movie, so... I, I'm really curious about listening to, you know, some of Blomkamp's interviews and where maybe he describes the process and, and, and the approach, because until the third act, once we got like a really solid reveal, I just wasn't as much about it. I mean, it was a pretty area of Canada that they filmed it in. And then, but aside from that, I, I don't know. I, I felt like there was a deliberate aspect, but maybe the deliverance was because of the fact that the money was what it was and so they just had to kind of format to accommodate so yeah now <clears throat> i mean what about effects wise i mean we got to touch on the effects again totally. we touched on it briefly in our overall thoughts but this movie hinges on this otherworldly reality right this other mm -hmm. virtual sort of reality they they never really call it vr because it's not it's literally integration. It's like you put yeah. this head thing on and it clo you close your eyes and you are in this space. So it's not like you're just putting on a VR helmet and you're seeing yourself in a 3D form. You're actually inserted program-wise into this VR headspace. So it's a little bit different than what you might be picturing had you not seen the movie. Now... Uh, again, the visualization for it, it just felt like mid-2000s rendering where there's still some lag and some gaps that aren't quite filled in, some programming issues where even from behind you can see through her head to her face. Yeah. You know, there's a, a lot of those things were interesting, but I think they were done to make it look like they were glitches as opposed to like the subtext of, oh my God, what does it mean that we can see through the back of her head to her face? No, 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 it's just the poor rending that they're trying to get across, but why kind of thing. Like, it, it almost raises more questions just from the production side of things that the story isn't prepared to answer, uh, uh -huh. nor does it care to do so. You know what I mean? It just, I don't know. No, I do. It doesn't help anything. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. And, I mean, the thing is, like, if you didn't have the money and you wanted to kind of factor in that sort of look to the story i guess you could kind of cheat it so to speak and if that was what <laughs> eventually ended up happening with this i mean more, more power to them for like folding it into the narrative and making it okay it was somewhere between a scanner darkly and cell but just looking 10 years before you know which was a little strange in that regard so but biggest effects that i have to say is once we finally do get a reveal of the opposition without really going into it i liked the look of that you get some taste of it in the trailer but once we get like a, a full-on look that's where i was like oh neil i wish you could have done this at a higher budget and with more time maybe to develop both story and visuals because i do in in, in hindsight i know i said earlier that i didn't necessarily think that it predicated and dictated how this movie ended up being made but maybe it did you know and to, he just wanted like so many creatives wanted to do something during the pandemic and more more power to them for doing their damnedest i filmed a music video you know during the pandemic and it was a weird situation so uh yeah this this could have been with all of the ideas 
in place something significantly more interesting. But the third act, once we got some of those visual reveals, I was pretty satisfied, actually. Yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it for our discussion on Demonic. If you want to watch it, it's available on VOD here in the U.S. starting on the 27th officially. Although Fuegos found some glitch in the system where he managed to get it on Amazon now, uh, uh, the week earlier. I looked on my Amazon and it literally said save to watch later and watch trailer but he had it on there for rent so we we got to watch it so i don't yeah. know if it's available when this review goes up but at the very latest it'll be available this friday the 27th Correct. and uh, you can yep. watch it then so uh, give it a try if you sound interested in it but i know we were bagging on it and i know the reviews have definitely been mixed out there but if it sounds remotely interesting maybe give it a try Maybe what I would recommend the way to do it is invite like your your three or four closest friends over and just split the cost everyone toss in four bucks or or if it's you know if it's one of those $15 rentals if it's a six dollar rental just you know have everyone toss in two bucks and boom now you, you don't even have to worry about having paid for a movie if you don't enjoy it at the end of it Fuego, do you have any final thoughts on this bad boy yeah it's currently in select theaters and it's supposed to be on vod this weekend i still don't understand how i was able to find it but i jumped on it and it was a 6.99 when i ran it on prime okay. so okay. you know it's it's not going to be one of those at home 20 dollars sort of situations there you and go. i don't think i would say that this is worth that kind of money personally N but no. you know no the at sure. home presentation <laughs> money do you think it's worth the 6.99 Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, especially if you're a fan of, you know, Neil and the stuff that he has done. And so, it, but it is for me, once again, to double down, it's the weakest feature I think that he has done, but it's not without merit. It has interesting aspects that I wish could have been refined in the proper situation. So fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, guys, if you have seen it, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Or if you haven't, let us know if you're at all interested after watching this and any other reviews. Would love to get your opinions in those comments down below. While you're down there, feel free to click the link to our Patreon in the description box. Through the Patreon, you can actually tell us movies to review or do commentaries for anything along those good lines. But until next time, you guys, I've been Cecil Laird. And gracias, I've been Jaime and Fuego. Join us later this week for our review of the brand new Candyman. Candyman. We, as we're recording this, we get to watch Candyman. that in two days Candyman. on Tuesday. Candyman. Okay, Candyman. Jack, you're going to, okay. <laughs> you know, cameras are a series of mirrors. So I know. you are actually, yes, okay. <laughs> Unless you're recording on a mirrorless camera, which I do have one, but I don't know if that's what you know. You're on your laptop, so I don't know. You might well, be we'll safe. see if I make it to Tuesday. So <laughs> if you don't show up, if 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 we read a story about blank blank was found uh, gutted from groin to gullet, then um, you know uh, we'll know that your girlfriend is first on the list. So <laughs> rejoice, lift up your voice. All right. <laughs> All right. So thanks very much, guys, and remember, stay, stay scared. scared.